Good morning, Pastor Carr. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We are gathered today on the second Sunday in Easter and also Confirmation Sunday to give thanks to God for his gift of faith, which was given to us and is now something that we don't simply hold on to, but we share with the world around us, with the people around us. Uh, we are sharing today the celebration of the Confirmation of Four Young Men and Women. Uh, so we are excited for that. We have lots going on. We've got some videos to see. Given the special nature of everything, I'm going to try not to bombard you with announcements. So I'm going to give you just like the top, right, like the highlights. Uh, I want to remind you that we do have our voters assembly this Thursday, 6.30, in the parish hall. Um, come and join us for that, please. Um, save the dates, reminders, vacation Bible school, June 20th and 24th. We don't have a sign in sign up for that yet, but keep that date in mind. Uh, National Day of Prayer, we're going to be celebrating on May 5th. Uh, there's a way that you can be a part of that. The easiest, probably what I would consider the best way is to get onto our website, ilcabq.org, and there is a link to sign up for a 30-minute time slot. It's a National Day of Prayer sign up link. Um, click on that. Thank you, Rachel, for getting that up there. Um, and you can sign up for a 30-minute time slot. We're going to be praying around the clock, hopefully, so I'm going to get the 2.30 share, but Good for you. Uh, so sign up for that. And then in conjunction with the National Day of Prayer, May 11th, I want to invite you to a special prayer service, the Wednesday evening here in Emmanuel at 630. Uh, we've done this when we were looking for a principal. And ta-da. Uh, we did this. We did this. We did this. Ta-da. Um, and then so now we're praying for our school, for our country, for everything going on. Um, so come join us for that. That's good. That's good. That's good. Okay. I don't want to do too, too much because I have a special guest here, Mr. Buter, the Mr. Buter, that's correct. Mr. Buter is here to tell us a little bit about Mission Sunday, Mission Weekend next week. Good morning. <laughs> You've seen these funny glasses before. They allow me to see the special hearts all Bangladesh have for Mission Sunday. We began Mission Festivals in 1985 and have celebrated every year. We will celebrate 2022 next week in all services, April 30th and April 1st. This year we'll welcome Pastor Doyle Whiten as our festival speaker. When you read the 2022 Mission Festival mailing you get this week, we pray for the plans the Lord has for the gift for each of our nine missions or missionaries that we support. Please use the mission envelope with it for the year. Our faith goal is nine thousand dollars, which we've reached or surpassed every year for a decade. Special thanks to Mike King for the mission letter, for Mary Alice and helpers for assembling it, and for Mr. Fleer, seventh graders who are now preparing for it. May God bless you at Mission Festival 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. G. Appreciate. Uh, mission is a big part of what we do here at Emmanuel, so we're excited for that. Uh, we will begin our worship today, which is Divine Service 74 with Holy Communion, uh, with a procession. So I invite you to stand and please face the back of the church towards our cross as we begin the opening hymn number 656.
Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And it is for his sake that he forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak our intro this morning responsibly. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. O oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. His miracles and the judgments he uttered. He remembers his covenants forever. The world that he inherited for a thousand generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good.
to God and Father, because you always add growth to your church. Increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that recalling the new birth by the water of holy baptism, they may forever continue in the family of those whom you adopt as your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 12 through 13, 32. Now many signs and wonders were regularly done among the people by the hands of the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared join them, but the people held them in high esteem. And more than ever, believers were added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on pots and mats, that as Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on some of them. The people also gathered from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those afflicted with unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up, and all who were with him, that is, the party of the Sadducees, and filled with jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out, and said, Go and stand in the temple, and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and began to teach. Now when the high priest came, and those who were with him, they called together the council and all the senate of Israel, and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the officers came, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported, We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were greatly perplexed about them, wondering what this would come to. And someone came to them, came and told them, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain with the officers went and brought them, but not by force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest questioned them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in, in this name, yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give rep repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to those things, and so is the Holy, the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hand, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith this morning in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of this Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again from according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite our congregation to be seated for the portion of the service that meets. The young ones are just chomping up to you guys and sit. You want to show them a video, right? They've been really excited for this part. So let's do that. They've 
grew up seeing me grow as a person and helped me learn what is right and wrong. And they just taught me everything I've known about the matter. Who's your, uh, who's your favorite pastor? <laughs> I'm going to Valley High School, and I will take what I learned in confirmation with me so that I can lead a strong Christian life through the things that I say and do, and I can also spread God's word to people who don't know who God is. I'm going to school next year at El Dorado High School, and I will take what I learned in confirmation now, but always remember that God is with me no matter what, and to always, that you will always stay on track and not do anything that he would want me to do. Next year I'm going to Hill Christian School and I'm going to take what I learned with me in confirmation to help me make the right decisions and to help me explain my faith to others. I'm at Polish year and I'm going to school next year, but I do know that next year stuff that I learned in confirmation will be choose my friend groups and who I hang out with because they can really impact how I will spend the rest of high school. And if I choose the wrong route, they can lead me down the wrong path. And that's not something I want to do. And I spend a lot of time in confirmation and I do not want to go down the wrong path. Just for it. I will spend eternity in heaven with Jesus because he died on the cross for me and for my sins to be taken away from me so that I am wiped clean again. And so I can spend time with him and his father forever in heaven. I will spend eternity in heaven because I have been given the gift of faith through the Holy Spirit and Jesus died on the cross to me. I will spend eternity in heaven because I believe that Jesus Christ is my Savior and that he died on the cross for my sins and rose again. I will spend eternity in heaven because God's word says that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And uh, because of that, we can spend eternity with him. Yeah. And do you believe God's word? Yes, I do. Great. <laughs> it is the word of God that we are celebrating today, and we're going to sing about now in our sermon hymn number 578. <laughs>
not just to have and to hold, but to share with the world around us. Lord, I ask that you would bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts. May it be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And it is the faith in that resurrected Jesus Christ that we are gathered here to celebrate today. We are celebrating our faith. We are celebrating the faith of these four young men and women as they publicly confess their faith in God and His wonderful plans for them through Jesus. Christ. Confirmation is the day that these brothers and sisters in Christ vow to make this faith their own. They vow to stay faithful to the belief and to the teaching of the Christian church, even, as we talked about, even to the point of death. This, of course, is a big day for them, but it is also a big day for us. Because for the Christian, for the follower of Christ, the faith of these confirmants, the faith expressed, well, it's our faith, too. Today we celebrate what the faith means for us. Today we celebrate that faith in Jesus Christ means we have forgiveness of our sins. We, in fact, have been washed clean in the blood of Jesus. We celebrate that faith in Jesus Christ means we have been made right, righteous, and reconciled to God our Father. We celebrate that through faith in Jesus, death is not the end. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead. We celebrate that faith in Jesus Christ means we indeed have a future and a hope. We have eternal life. In Christ's kingdom, a kingdom which has no end. That future hope brings us for this day peace and endurance for even the most difficult days of this life. Today we celebrate not only what our faith means for us, we celebrate that we have faith in the first place. One of the most incredible things that we recognize as we read God's word is that God not only grants the incredible gifts given through faith in Christ, but faith in Christ itself is an incredible gift from God. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, No one can say, no one can proclaim, no one can believe this, no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. I spent some time with these confirmandos this year walking through Luther's small catechism. And the place in the catechism that explains this the best, the clearest, that this faith is God given is in Luther's explanation to the third article of the Creed, which Max and Genziel will now recite. <laughs> <laughs> the face was priceless. <laughs> What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. It is God's doing the whole way through. What an incredible gift of faith we have in Jesus Christ, and today we acknowledge that. Our faith is celebrated as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, we see first that this puts us in the passive. This puts us as receivers of God's, of God's good gifts. Gifts of faith, gifts of forgiveness, gifts of resurrection, gifts of eternal life. The Father has indeed brought that faith to us. The Holy Spirit has worked it in us. And Jesus Christ has earned what this faith gives us. Forgiveness and eternal life. But today we, as we celebrate 
the Christian faith and celebrate our God-given faith, we recognize that as his church, as the body of Christ on earth, as his witnesses, we are no longer just passive receivers of this faith. God has given us a mission and a purpose. Operation students, God has given you a mission and a purpose. God has called you and indeed called each of us to something incredible in this Christian life. You see, the Holy Spirit works and he can work any way he wants, but the Holy Spirit works through means to create faith in us. What are those means? Well, often people like you and me, his believers. His church. They are those same means by which you were called to pay. Maybe those means were your parents or grandparents. Maybe those means were a friend or a spouse. However, you came to faith in Jesus Christ, whatever means brought you there and brings you here today. Those are God-given means. Those are God-given people. That God has used to grow and to sustain His church for nearly 2,000 years. And so as believers, as celebrators of faith, and what our faith means, what is there to learn today about our role when it comes to faith in this life? Well, I'm going to share with you two readings, one from the book of Acts, one from the book of John. First one from the book of Acts. Philip has gone out post-resurrection, just post-resurrection. He has gone to share the good news to Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all of her treasure, he had come to Jerusalem to worship. Now, maybe God hasn't called you to plug up and move to share his gospel to county church workers. But wherever you are in this life, you are called to share Jesus in your sphere of influence with the people around you, with the people he has put into your life. In fact, the Holy Spirit places opportunities every day, each and every day, for you to make Christ known to this world. You saw I asked the kids in their confirmation video, how will you take the faith you learn with you into confirmation, excuse me, you learn with you in confirmation into high school next year? You are going to high school. Okay. What's that? Okay. <laughs> but that's a good question for you, right? How will you take the faith you learned, you were raised in, the faith that saved you into your job, into your neighborhood, into your marriage, into your family? Our confirmation students, many of them were fortunate enough to spend years here in Atlanta. What a blessing. Hearing about Jesus each and every day. Hearing about God who loves them each and every day. Maybe you were fortunate enough to come here to Emmanuel to hear the same thing or to be raised in a household of the Christian faith. Many people are not. Many people are not. In so many of the conversations I've had with people, it's not so much that they are rejecting Faith in the authentic Jesus Christ in his ministry, but they really don't know what the authentic Jesus Christ in his ministry is. They don't even know what they are rejecting. So Philip ran to him, we're told. And he heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked him, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I? Unless someone guides me. Then Philip opened his mouth and 
beginning with this scripture, he told them the good news about Jesus. As a follower of Jesus Christ, as his disciple, you are a guide to the truth of God in Jesus Christ. Not you should be. Not you could be. Not you one day will be. You are. <coughs> By virtue of your sameness, you are this. Confirmation students, you were guided to this point, right? Guided by parents, guided by family, guided by pastors, <clears throat> guided by people who knew the faith before you. You are no longer being guided. This day, today, you become the guides. You become the teachers of Jesus Christ for those who do not know him. You take hold of this faith and you make it your own. You are the body of Christ. The physical representation of an eternal God whom we will one day be physically united with in a beautiful way. For the rest of us, it is true, you OG compliments. Truly, really guys, you are. Philip's question is an easy one. No, this is not rocket science. I've read it a lot of times. Do you understand what you're reading? Do you understand who Isaiah is talking about? The Ethiopian says, how can I? Unless someone guides me. And then Philip does the most impressive, out of this world, missionary thing that could ever be done. He, he opened his mouth. He opened his mouth. This, one of the scariest things, but the easiest in terms of ability thing to do. He opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told the good news. It would have been really easy for Philip to say, Ooh, Peter's kind of in charge. Well, it's not about told him, you should talk to him. Or, see, we're kind of in the middle of a desert here. Why don't you set up a time with me? We'll, we'll do an appointment next. Text me. We'll get together on this. <laughs> Instead, Philip realized something important. Something we must recognize. He was there. He was placed there by God. By the Holy Spirit, he was placed there in that situation to make the promises and the truth of Jesus Christ real. And it is the same thing he does with us. That sounds like a lot of pressure. But, compliments, Friends in Christ, hear this. Big important advice. You cannot do this alone. Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse 5, this is the way it works. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do a little bit. That was the Dustin revised version. <laughs> Apart from me, you can do nothing. He says. Apart from Christ, you can do nothing. We cannot disconnect ourselves from Christ and expect to be whole. We cannot be cut off from the vine and expect to be nourished and expect to bear fruit. It is Jesus who nourishes us. It is his forgiveness that heals us. It is his body and blood that feeds us. 
It is his baptism that daily washes us clean and reminds us of who we truly are. It is Jesus and his promises, his eternal life, his kingdom that sustains us through the days which days these sometimes awful days. But apart from him, we can do nothing. And the truth is, apart from him, we are nothing. For my confirmation, friends, this morning, here's the skill. This is not a graduation. <laughs> this is not an end. This is, in fact, a beginning. Today you begin your adult Christian life. You know what would be really silly to do? Cut yourself off in Jesus. Do not, do not, do not disconnect yourself from Jesus. No matter what your plans for the future are, the sports you plan to play, the colleges you desire to get into, the friends you hope to make, the career paths you decide to take, the families you may one day have, and the kids you may one day raise, and the gray hairs that will eventually adorn your head, which is really true for some of us, <laughs> and the final breaths you take. In all of it, Jesus will be with you. It's a promise, and he's faith. Jesus will be with you. He will care for you. He will guide you. He will sustain you, and his promises for you will be kept sure and certain. So, do not connect, disconnect yourself with him. Do not disconnect yourself from him, because he will never ever leave you until he returns or calls you home. You are his. This is the same message for all of us. No matter where you are in your journey, you're a child of God. You're a little lamb. No matter where you are in your journey, today is a new day. Today is a fresh start, a forgiven day in Christ, an opportunity being led by the Holy Spirit, being guided by the Christian faith given to us, work in us, to be the guides, to be the teachers, to bring the light of Jesus Christ into this world. And it is a light, and it is a truth that leads to eternal life. Amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Information can be found in your hymnals, it's probably on the screen, no one's taking it. But it's on page 272 if you want to check out your hymnals. With the class of 2022, please, 2022, please rise. <coughs> Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ sent to his apostles all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith, according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before man, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before man, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. 
Lift up your hearts and forth. The God of all grace and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Do you renounce the devil? Do you renounce all his works? Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and died for our sins, Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? Yes. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures as you have learned to know it from the small catechism? to be faithful and true. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even today? Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Caleb Daniel Brandon. <laughs> I'm confirmation versus Joshua and I. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I chose this because it helps me remember to be strong and not to be afraid of things, even when I don't like them or don't want to do Caleb Daniel Brandon, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven all of your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Madison Brooke Martinez. My confirmation verse is Psalms 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield, and him I trust. So I am held, and my heart exalts. And with my song, I did thanks to him. I chose it because it really stood out to me, and I love the meaning of it. It helps me remember that I should trust in God, and that everything has a reason, and he has a plan for me. Madison Brooke Martinez. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. Nicole Kelly Nim. My confirmation verse is Psalm 18, verses 1 through 3. Uh, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and horn of my salvation, 
my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. I chose this verse because it's one of my favorite verses, and it reminds me that God is my rock, and I can wish I could. Nicole Kelly Neal, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven all of your sins, strengthening you with His grace to life everlasting. Amen. My confirmation verse is Matthew chapter 32. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. And I picked it because my grandpa picked it up for me. And I will to him to keep God first in my life. Next in Christopher Van Zeele, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all of your sins, strengthen you with His grace to life everlasting. <coughs> Amen. Patricia Nichol, 
who is uh, recovering from surgery for a bowel blockage. For our brother, Mayor Kenton, Lord, hospitalized with heart issues, we ask that you would provide healing uh, according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, your son greets his disciples with peace despite their sins against him. Make us confident in his mercy toward us and gladden our hearts as he comes to us in his body and blood to forgive, renew, and strengthen us. Lord, in your mercy. We implore you, O Lord, to sanctify and keep the congregations, schools, and organizations together with all people in truth. Your word is truth. Preserve us from false teaching. Bring us to repentance for every place where love and zeal has faltered. Grant us and our children bold and steadfast hearts to remain faithful to this confession in church, suffering all rather than to fall away from it, and unite us with all Christians in a true confession of Jesus Christ, in whom the world has redemption, the forgiveness of sin. To you alone be all glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it, in the remembrance of me. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.
Thank you. 